Hey y'all, it's Angela here again at the Chicken Coop Homestead. And today it is a dreary, rainy day outside and I haven't really done an update in a long time about my herbs and the herb course I'm taking. And so I thought today would be a good day for that. I had done a video before about uh, how I was storing my herbs and, and where I had had them in a cabinet and it was back in a back bedroom. Well, I just found that the herbs weren't very handy for me to work with them uh, back all the way back there. Um, so I moved them up into the front of the house. This is my front sunroom. It's the front room of the house. And this is this door right here goes into my kitchen. So I thought it would just be a better place for me to store all my herbs and stuff here in this room. So I have them in these cabinets. These are just built-in cabinets. This, the lady that used to own this house when we bought it 20, 30 years ago, whatever, this was like a formal living room and dining room. And this little area was just a little nook that she had her dining room table. She just had a little small four-seater dining room table. And this was like cabinets for like a china cabinet. So um, this is what I store my herbs in. This room is very bright, but it doesn't get like a lot of direct sunlight. Uh, and then, so these little um, grates over these cabinets is good enough to, um, to cover my herbs from sunlight and a lot of light exposure. All right, so here is just a little bit more of some storage area. I have like my oils and my alcohol and um, some of my essential oils. I don't do a lot of essential oils, but some friends of mine had given me some essential oils, so I just keep them in this little basket. Uh, mainly, I use those for aromatherapy. I don't usually use my essential oils for any kind of herbal products or anything store my jars up here. I think I've showed y'all these before. These are those wee yogurt jars and then I bought these online. These are a little wooden um, lid that has a uh, seal on them. So this makes a really good jar for storing your herbs and you're recycling this little wee jar. So I really like that. I keep a lot of anything I'm making teas and stuff in uh, in my little tea area in my kitchen. I use those. So those are them. And then I also save uh, little, these were when my daughter had one of her babies, I saved all of the little uh, beech nut uh, baby food jars. I just really liked the shape. I had the lids there down below. So I really like these little jars as well. But mostly up here is just, you know, like I say, my alcohol, my oils. I have vitamin E oil, which is a preservative for your herbs and things like when you're making salves and oil that vitamin E is like a preservative. Uh, so let me just kind of go over um, with you. I put this jar up there because it has a little nick in the lid. So it's not a good jar for canning anymore, but it's a perfect jar for storing oils or herbs, dried herbs and stuff like this. So I wanted to keep it separated from my regular inventory of canning jars. Same thing on this one. It had some little nicks and stuff. So save your nicked up candy jars for storage jars. All right, secondly, um, okay, so these are my oils on this side, things that I'm already made oils out of or that I'm going to make oils out of or um, this is um, things that I have already made tinctures out of or that are in the process of being made into tinctures. This is some extra of my wine, so I'm not, I'll take that out of there. Um, this is just leftover from Christmas. I had some uh, peppermint candy. So peppermint candy could be a really good ingredient for a cough syrup. So for me, I, um, I crushed up some of the peppermint candy and put it in some of my uh, alcohol and to as an ingredient in a uh, a cough syrup so that's what this is so if you have any leftover peppermint candy for christmas don't get rid of it make you a little bit of a 
of a tincture of peppermint. It's not a peppermint herb, but it is peppermint in the form of a candy. So here are all some of my herb books. I have some of them in here. I'm working on studying my herb course. So the, the books that I use the most as reference materials and stuff, I have actually in my little office working on them. And then I have, these are all my dried herbs and stuff. And then these are my tinctures that I've made that I've put in my little tincture bottles and stuff. And I've made some little homemade little tags that are cute and stuff like that. I don't know if you can see it really good. This little, this little cabinet right here, uh, I need to look for some more of these. These, this is like a spice jar little rack. Um, and I got it like at a garage sale or something for like $2, but it's perfect. It holds my tincture bottles. So I can get a lot more tincture bottles in here and have like a double stack of those. So it's kind of a uh, storage saving um, rack. So if I come across any more of those in a garage sale, I need to pick some more of those up because it'll be good. So I have a lot of dried herbs and some of them I have in little just baggies that I bought from a, an herb store. And the reason why uh, I bought these, these are some of the things that I need for my herbal course. We have to do some little projects and stuff with specific herbs for my herbal course. So some of these I might not have bought except that I needed them for my herbal course. So I need to get these transferred out of these little sacks into some containers. So that's one of the things I'm gonna work on today. So let me kind of get them all out of here. And then for me, in my, of course I have to do some things for my course, but for me, my emphasis on for my herbal journey is to do things that number one, <clears throat> that are sustainable, like I, that I could forage for locally, that grow uh, abundantly, or number two, that I can grow here abundantly. I don't really care about too many herbs that might come from Africa or Israel or something unless I could grow them here, uh, but I do have to uh, use those type of herbs in my course. I'm more interested in herbs that I can produce, I can grow, I can forage, here on my homestead or in the surrounding areas. Those are, that's my emphasis for my herbal journey. Everybody's different. Uh, that's why I'm not too much into using essential oils, even though there is a method of making your own essential oils as far as like through distillment and all that kind of stuff. I'm not really into that. Uh, I can make an oil, but it's not a distilled oil. It is just a, an infused oil. I can make those. So I'm more interested in the very basic art of herbalism, what people used to do a long time ago uh, to is it as a form of healing or um, preventative medicine type things. Those are the things that I'm interested in. In my channel right now, especially, I'm not gonna be giving out any kind of medical advice. I might say something that I use it for as an example for me, but especially for me, because I'm a registered nurse, I'm not gonna give out medical advice for you to be using. There's plenty of channels for that. Um, ones that I would recommend, number one, is I would recommend Homegrown Herbalist. He is a veterinarian. He has used these herbs in his practice on uh, you, the animals that he treated. He is a licensed herbalist. He is uh, also an extremely intelligent man. He, because he's a veterinarian, he knows the science behind the herbs. His wife is a certified nurse midwife. She's used them in her practice. Law is, um, also has some sort of science degree. I don't know exactly off the top of my head what it is, but they're very smart people and they know the science behind the herbs and what you can rely on his knowledge as it is, he's is a good healing herb, but also he's put it into pra many years of practice and he also knows what's safe medically as far as those type of things. So that would be my number one recommendation for anybody to you to uh, watch his channel. He gives a lot of good information and breaks it down very well. Like I say, this is mostly my herb uh, that are dried here. 
Uh, the one thing that I will tell you is as herbs will lose their potency. So I have a lot of dried herbs here that I need to do something with in these as well. But also too, I need to make sure that I want to, what I'm doing with them, I want to make some oils and some tinctures. I want to make mainly make tinctures is because a tincture will never, hardly ever go bad. And so the money that you're, you know, you're uh, spending on herbs, if you're buying herbs, or if you're uh, all the time and energy you're using to harvest herbs, to dry them, to clean them, all forage for them, all that kind of stuff can be saved for a long-term storage by using tinctures. Oils uh, eventually will go uh, rancid, so you can't use you know oils that's kind of a limited shelf life, but a tincture will kind of last forever. But it shouldn't be too much of a problem uh, especially if I'm going to be growing most of these herbs. But for some, for me, um, I may or may not have a huge quantity of herbs. So, but you would be surprised how much of the herb you actually need to make a tincture and make a whole tincture bottle of herb. And then when you dose this herb, it's only going to be, uh, you know, 10, 15, 30 drops of the herb. So it's not gonna be a huge amount of that you need to have on hand for your herbs for your home use unless you're making them to sell or something like that. Um, so, so let me just kind of go over some of the things that I already have prepared. Uh, St. John's wort, uh, I've made a tincture of that. This is uh, el an elderberry tincture. I uh, grow, I have a few elderberries that I'm growing, but I have a huge elderberry bush on my property and I harvest from it. It was just a native elderberry bush that I was so lucky to be have on my property. It's huge. It's probably the size of a pickup truck and it produces a lot of elderberry. So elderberry tincture will last forever, okay? And then I also have elderberries that I have frozen uh, for this. That's the only, elderberry, frozen elderberries are about the only thing that I have that's frozen. Um, here's lemon balm. Um, uh, I grow lemon balm, so I have harvested a lot of lemon balm. And here's another, another whole big jar of lemon balm. So I have a lot of lemon balm and I also have a lemon balm tincture. Uh, I will say that is one of the herbs that I use a lot of, uh, that I've made a tincture out of. It is very relaxing. I take it to help me go to sleep. And I love using my lemon balm tincture. But that, like I say, I'm not giving anybody any medical advice because I'm not a physician and I'm not a, a certified herbalist. That's just my experience is lemon balm in a... Uh, tincture for helps me relax to go to sleep this is bee balm leaves um, I'm going to use this one of my assignments this uh, time in my class is to do just make a tea beverage so I also have bee balm flowers these are bee balm leaves I'm gonna make a tea with the bee balm flowers and probably I'm going to use some hibiscus the calyx of the hibiscus that I harvested this year and um, and make that. And then maybe some lemon and honey and that'll be kind of just a little beverage. Uh, that was one of our assignments to come up with a, a beverage blend of tea. Uh, these are uh, ones that I've grown and harvested myself is my bee balm and my bee balm uh, flowers. So I have those. Um, this is goldenrod. This is uh, something we I foraged. I have another big jar of goldenrod. Um, so I also have a goldenrod tincture and I have a goldenrod oil. So um, that is something that is really a good uh, herb to have on hand and very easy to forage for, especially here in East Texas. This is an herb, it's called cleavers. 
uh, pretty much it's just a weed if and when you learn about it it does a lot of good things but this is something that I foraged for in my yard I didn't go do anything spectacular and look how much cleavers I have also have a, a cleavers tincture that's prepared this is just a little joke we found this in a at Halloween time and my husband's all the time telling me I'm making I'm you know gonna poison him with my tinctures and stuff and he found this little bottle said arsenic on it so it was just kind of a little joke and so I keep it in here with my tinctures and stuff my, my herbs even though I'm not gonna do that to my husband this is the the bee balm leaves about that um these are the bee balm petals this is wood betony. It was an herb that I had to have for my class. I really don't know much about it. I probably need to make a tincture out of that, and I haven't done that yet, so that's one thing. This is oat straw. It has a lot of mucilage in it, so it's very kind of coating. Um, so it, that's something to have on hand. So is marshmallow root. It has a lot of mucilage in it. Um, this is lamb's ear. Uh, it's still whole. See the whole lamb's ear? And what I have done here is lamb's ear, uh, if you look up the history of lamb's ear, it was something that they used to stop the bleeding in uh, wartime. And um, so it is kind of, they used to almost use it like a bandage. So that's why the leaves are whole for any kind of uh, applying it to any big wounds or anything, okay? So that's why I have lamb's ear. And I grew this and just harvested it myself. So it was very easy to, to grow and harvest. Um, this is just mint, you know, good for teas, things like that. Uh, grew that in my yard. This is, val this is a valerian tincture that I have going. Um, I'm, I need to strain it. It's in the Nervine family. It's very good uh, for that type of thing. If you look up what Nervines do, that's a valerian is in the Nervine family. <clears throat> so I've got to, that's one of the things I've got to do is strain this and get it put up. So I'll set that out. That's something I need to work on. This is another tincture I have going. Dr. Patrick Jones in the Homegrown Herbalist talks about as a, as a kind of an emergency medication. Um, it's uh, cayenne tincture. So uh, you could re see, research that in his um, channel about cayenne tinctures, but I need to um, strain this and get this going. So I'll set that out. A lot of these I've done, I need to get strained. This is catnip. It's an also another Nervine, and so I need to get that strained. And if you also see, I use a lot of, uh, this is like a pasta bottle. You can use a lot of those bottles that you save for your herbal tinctures to make those. Instead of using your really good bottle or your really good uh, mason jars, use your saved bottles for that. Um, this is whorehound. Uh, that can be made into a really good cough medication. So um, this was whorehound tincture that I have ready. I've already strained. This is violet leaves. Violet leaves. Um, I don't remember exactly about violet leaves, but these were ones that I actually picked in my yard. I actually have a lot of wild violets that grow in my yard. They just come up. They're kind of a nuisance. They grow everywhere, even though I like violets. But it, once you grow violets, they don't want to stay in the bed that you grow them in. You will find them all over your yard growing. So um, instead of turning that negative into a positive, get your, make a violet tincture. So I need to strain that out. And see, you can take a small amount of herb and you know make you a, just this little jar would fill up one of those little bottles for a tincture and then you have enough for your personal use. It doesn't take a whole lot of herb for all that. Um, here's another one I need to strain. This is nasturtium leaves. Uh, so it is kind of like a, a good antibiotic, I think. Um, these were some that I, I grew as well. And you can see I've reused a bottle, so I need to get that one strained. This one is Skullcap. I also grew Skullcap, but I also think I had bought some Skullcap at the very beginning of our course when we were doing Nervines. And so I think this is not the one I grew, but the one that I had purchased, and I made a tincture out of that. <coughs> I have 
goldenrod tincture. I have a hops tincture. Uh, this was actually from some hops that I bought, but that is one of the things I want to try to grow is grow some hops, not for beer making or anything like that, but I want to have it on board for more tinctures and things like that. I think that would be great. This is a mulein leaf. It's a mulein leaf tincture. This was something um, that I actually purchased, but I have foraged for it as well. So I just see, and look how a little bit of that that I made. I just had a little bit of mulein leaf, and so I just made a small little tincture. And when I strained it, that's all that I had for it. But that little, and I reused a little garlic bottle jar for that. This is dandelion flower tincture. This is more cleavers tincture. This is more dandelion leaf tincture. I have dandelion flower, I have dandelion leaf, and there's also dandelion root. Um, so those are all good. I have a basil tincture. I have a rosemary tincture, a raspberry leaf tincture. That was actually one of the ones that we um, needed for our classroom for an assignment. So I just bought a little bit of it and made a tincture out of it. Uh, this is a peppermint tincture more peppermint that I grew in my uh, yard. Oh, here's a parsley tincture, more just parsley out of my yard. Made a tincture out of it. All right, I haven't grown chamomile, but I'm gonna try growing that this year and have my own chamomile, but I bought some, so I made a chamomile tincture. I made an astragalus root tincture. This is, of course, the St. John's ashwagandha tincture. Those were all two for, an for part of my assignment for my herbal course. Um, of course, more mulein tincture, more goldenrod tincture, more dandelion leaf tincture, more cleavers tincture, um, more dandelion flower tincture. Um, I have bee balm tincture, peppermint, more hops. Oh, I have a clove tincture. Now this is one, I will tell you, and I don't mind telling you this one, um, because I worked for a dentist uh, before I became a nurse, and the medications that they use to put inside a root canal actually has some clove in it. That gives it that smell. Sometimes that, that smell that you smell inside of a dent dental office is clove, and so I made a clove tincture. I had clove, I can't remember if I had clove, whole cloves or whole clove powder, and then I made a tincture out of that, and that's a very good toothache medication. So that's kind of a, an emergency medicine thing to have on hand uh, if you need it and can't go to the store and get any, you know, you have a tooth break, you know, it's in on the weekend, you can't get in to see the dentist. So clove tincture is a very good uh, emergency medicine to have on hand. So I have a friend that's doing the course with me and she and I kind of trade off sometimes the things that she makes. She makes extra of, she gives it to me. I give her the things that I have extra. So this is pine oil that she made. I have goldenrod oil. That's really good. I have a comfrey salve. This is one of the very first salves I made. Um, I probably didn't know exactly what I needed to be doing to make it, but um, I really like this country salve. This is just a lot of kind of the residual powder that didn't get strained out, kind of settled to the bottom, but that's okay. So this is my comfrey salve. I have more rosemary oil and I have more dandelion oil, a little dandelion. Uh, I love my uh, rosemary oil. Um, I keep it, a little jar of it, 
lotion for my hands that I keep beside the couch at night. But also I use it, I have a little bit of corporal tunnel and I can use that rosemary oil and my, it helps my corporal tunnel. But my corporal tunnel is not really bad or anything like that, just a little, sometimes my, my wrists hurt. But if I use that rosemary oil, it, it helps with that. So that's kind of one of the things that I use my rosemary oil. I also have some lavender oil. I love my lavender oil. It turned out great. So those are some of the things that I have made. Uh, this is actually an orange peel tincture. Um, it's almost like you're making an orange liqueur, uh, but that's my orange peel tincture. And you can see how, how, li how orange the liquid is. It's gonna be really good. Oh, let me tell you about some of the herbs that I bought that I'm gonna make some things with. So this is Balm of Gilead Buds. I'm gonna make a Balm of Gilead oil and, and maybe probably a salve. First you have to make the oil, then you make the salve. So I was really excited about this. This is, you know, goes all the way back to biblical times. So I was very excited to get this Balm of Gilead. I knew I wouldn't be able to grow the Balm of Gilead, so I might as well purchase that. Um, this is plantain. I can, I finally figured out what plantain looks like in the wild. We have the, what I see on our property is the little minor plantain, not the major plantain. And so what I was expecting when I would see in the books would be this big, huge plant, but mine are actually very small. They're only about three or four inches across. Um, but I do have those here on my property. I didn't figure this out till late last year. So that is one thing that I do plan on uh, foraging for here on my property and is plantain. But I did go ahead and buy some so that I could get something going with my plantain. I'm, so this is lobelia leaf. It's a nervine. It was one of the things that I needed for my first course, but they were out of it. So uh, when I went back the second time, they had some lobelia. So I'm gonna make a tincture probably out of that. This is calendula flowers. There's tons of information about calendula, making calendula salves, all that kind of stuff. It's a good healing medication and the little flowers. I do find that I have a hard time growing calendula here. I'm gonna keep trying, uh, you know, but uh, I have talked to some of my master gardeners and they do say it's kind of hard to grow here. Uh, I think we're too wet. So um, I did buy some calendula so I could make my own calendula salve. But I do know uh, a, one of the garden stores here in, in Mineola, they have uh, grown it and raised it enough to make calendula salve. So I'm gonna talk with her and see if, if she can give me some pointers on calendula. Okay, yarrow flower. I have yarrow growing, but I don't have enough of it to have a really big harvest yet. So that's one of the things this year, I'm gonna probably grow, buy more yarrow plants and get a good thick uh, little patch of yarrow growing so that I can start harvesting it. This is yarrow flowers. Yarrow flowers is kind of like the lamb's ear. It is, there's lots of history that goes all the way back and it is called the soldier's herb. It is another one of those things. It was prevented infection and all that kind of stuff and help with wound healing. So yarrow flowers. Um, white willow bark. White willow bark is another very old herb that Indians have used for years and years and years. It's a it's a nervine. It's a painkiller, um, and so I we do have willow that grows on our property. Uh, I don't know that it is white willow, but it really all willows have the same properties. It has the uh, the same properties as aspirin, and so um, uh, I bought some white willow so that I could go ahead and make my tincture, but I am very excited to this year harvest some of my own willow, scrape the bark, and make my own willow bark tincture. Okay, fever few. I, I, I don't grow fever few. I think I can grow fever few. I'm gonna try to do that. It's one of the herbs I wanna try growing. And so, um, Feverfew, I bought some so that I would have it. 
Here's another one I grew. This is Arnica. Uh, that's an herb that you might see a lot of in the store. They have a lot of Arnica oils and things that people are using for arthritis. Uh, it's, you know, out there in the store in Walmart, Arnica oil for, you know, uh, uh, arthritis pain. So I'm gonna probably make an Arnica oil out of this. Might make an Arnica tincture as well. I don't know yet. I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more research, but that's why I bought this. And I don't know that I can grow Arnica, so I was glad to be able to get it. But you know, I might can, who knows. Okay, passion flower herb. I am gonna grow some passion flower. Um, I don't know, I can't remember off the top of the head what this was good for. Passion flower is one of the things that I, uh, you know, they're supposedly really easy to grow. I've never grown them, but I'm gonna to try to work on growing passion flower. But I was very excited to actually purchase some as well. And then last but not least is mugwort. I can grow mugwort. I've seen it sold in the herb, uh, actually my nurseries mugwort, but I didn't know anything about it. Um, it is one of the things that I want to start researching and learning about, but I also think that I can forage for mugwort, but I, if I see it in the, the nurseries this year, I will definitely get a start of mugwort to grow as well. So it is amazing how many herbs that you, that you might have around you that you can grow and um, or forage for it, you would just be surprised like that cayenne pepper tincture i also have enough cayenne pepper that i grew myself that was from uh cayenne that i grew myself and dried uh, i'm going to make a cayenne pepper oil uh that's supposed to be a very good muscle rub i'm going to make some of that but anyways i one of, one of my things of my class was to get an inventory <clears throat> of all the things that i have and as of now, I have 47 herbs, and probably more than half of them I have grown or foraged for, or someone else locally has grown them and I could grow them that I could that I have in at my disposal. So that is amazing, y'all. If you would, could learn about 47 herbs, just think of all the knowledge and what all you could do with 47 herbs. And that's not even counting a lot of the, the culinary herbs that, you know, oregano, like I don't even have oregano on here. Oregano is a great herb. I do have rosemary, I do have basil, I do have parsley, but there's tons of culinary herbs that are actually medicinal as well. It helps you, just kind of gives you a little insight on my medicinal uh, herbal journey. My friend and I are very excited. Uh, we really are trying to keep ourselves organized this year and start pushing through all this information that we have to learn. We're trying to keep ourselves accountable. So thanks for visiting with me and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.